You will often need to use Excel to produce visual representations of data, such as charts and graphs. For this spreadsheet, I've written down some data about the television show Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm going to use this data to create two different kinds of charts. In column A, I've typed the episode numbers of all the episodes in season one, and in column B, I've described the US viewers in terms of millions of viewers. In column D, I have seasons 1 through 7, and in column E, I've listed the total number of episodes in each season. I'm going to use this data to create two different charts. The first step is to enter your data into the worksheet. I've left column C empty to create some white space between my two sets of data, but I could have placed either set of data in a different location. My next step is to select the data that I want to use to create a chart. I'm going to do this a couple of different ways. I might start by selecting from cell B2 down to cell B26, and then going to Insert, the Charts group, and Recommended Charts. On Recommended Charts, I'll get an interface that shows me thumbnail icons on the left and a preview on the right that demonstrates potential charts that I might like to use. Perhaps the clustered column type depicts the data in the way that I contemplate. Viewers on the vertical axis and episode numbers along the bottom axis. Click OK and the chart will appear. Something that you might notice immediately is that in my first item inside of row 2 was episodes 1 and 2. The reason why this says episode 1 and 2 is because the pilot was a two-part episode. You'll notice if you take a closer look that Excel doesn't understand this fact about Star Trek The Next Generation that I do, so it has labeled our first row, row number 2, as item number 1, our second row, number 3, as item number two, and so on with 25 different items. This doesn't truly describe the episodes by their proper numbers. I'll click on the chart area and press backspace to delete it. Now I'm going to start again. This time, instead of selecting only the data in column B, I'm going to select the data from A1 all the way down to cell B26. I could go to recommended charts, but I already have an idea for the specific chart I want now. I'm looking for a type that's labeled as clustered column. I'll go to insert, charts, insert column or bar chart, and browse the options. Similar to other aspects of Microsoft Office, as I place my cursor over top of any of these options, I'll be able to see a preview of what I would get before committing to it. The type of chart that I want does not appear, so I'll go to More Column Charts. Inside of here, I see the category column, and I see different types of clustered column charts and how they represent the data. This first one isn't really right for me because it's plotting the episode numbers, which of course will increase along with the US viewers. I want to use the episode numbers as the labels for my horizontal axis. Something that looks more like this. I'll left click and select OK. To move the chart, I'll place my mouse cursor over top of the white area until I see the four-way arrows icon, left-click, hold down the mouse button, and drag to reposition. When I release the mouse button, the chart will stay where I've placed it. This time, I have 25 vertical lines, and the first one is labeled 1 and 2, using the same label that I started with in column A followed by the proper sequence of episode numbers, ending on 26, the last episode of Season 1. 
Now the labels for my horizontal axis are in fact correct, and this depended on my knowledge about the data I have reproduced in this worksheet, which would have been impossible for Excel to understand independently. Next I'll demonstrate creating a pie chart using the rest of the data I have in this worksheet. I'll start by selecting cells D1 to E8. Again, I can go to Insert and Recommended Charts to see different visualizations of the data. Of course, some might not make sense because the software can't really understand what the context of the data is. I'll select a pie chart and click on OK. The pie chart appears. Notice that it's landed in my worksheet in a way that has overlapped my original chart. Again, I'll move my mouse cursor over it until I see the four-way arrow symbol, left-click, and drag this chart to another location. If I want to deselect the chart, I'll simply click anywhere outside of the chart area, and to select the chart again, I'll place my cursor over top of the chart and left-click. When white circles appear around the border of the chart, I know it is currently selected. I can also see that the name box says Chart 3. If I left-click on one of the corners and drag down, I'll be able to increase the size of the chart while maintaining the original proportions of the chart. Or, if I click on one of these white circles on the top, bottom, left or right sides, I'll be able to distort the shape of the overall chart object. You can also move your charts to different locations. Right now, I'm inside of the STTNG worksheet, which contained my data at the beginning of this video. Let's say that I wish to move the second chart into a new worksheet tab. I'll left click on the chart. Notice that Chart Tools becomes available. And I'll click on the Design tab and look for the Move Chart location on the far right side. When I click on this, two options appear. The text in this pop-up menu says choose where you want the chart to be placed. Currently, this chart is an object in STTNG, and I also have the option to move it to a new sheet, which will be labeled Chart 1 by default. I'm going to select New Sheet and relabel this to be called Pie Chart and I'll click OK. The pie chart has disappeared from my original tab, and Excel has created a new tab called Pie Chart, which contains this chart. You can see this if I click on the STTNG tab. This is useful if you want to isolate the chart visually because you don't like the look of having it nearby the data that underlies it. I'll continue working with these charts in the next video, manipulating charts and graphs in Excel.